No wonder people leave after three months because they don't need you because you're providing nothing. Over time, you should be looking at getting these clients that are staying for a year, two years, three years. Short-term strategies just lead to short-term clients. A client retained is easier than a client gained. How you can improve your retention as a coach to get better client results. Hey guys, welcome to Business and Banter YouTube channel. Myself and Mike are here and we're going to help you with your online fitness business, the online fitness business, if I can get my words out in any way that we can. Um, so yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do. Um, well, they haven't watched the video yet. Maybe you have watched one of the old ones. If you haven't subscribed, we've noticed that 95% of people who watch these videos aren't currently subscribed. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> so please subscribe. Uh, just for our own ego. It doesn't actually give us anything, obviously, but um, it's just a nice ego thing, isn't it? It's um, um, with that. I'm guessing it's for sponsorships, is it? Why I think it just makes that? you look better, doesn't it? Yeah, it's you know more. You, more it looks like more people are actually yeah. interested in what you have to say. But um, I mean, if Rick Shields can get 2.7 million people to subscribe to his channel, I'm pretty sure we can get three million. I'm pretty sure. So we just want three. We'll start with three. Three of you. Be, will be one of the three that yeah. subscribes, please. Um, that would be great. So today we're going to talk about retention with your clients, and and again, no, no one in this industry seems to focus on this. They always focus on new leads, new clients, new people through the door, and it's all the the big thing. And it's all focused on that dopamine hit of getting more clients through the door. Whereas actually, we're like, well, why do you need so many clients through the door? Like, let's let's address that. Let's address why you constantly need new leads and new clients through the door. And it's usually because your clients drop off after three months, which is usually the minimum period that you charge for or you charge up front to get to that point. And we're going to talk today about why if you're actually focused on retention within your clients, you will actually get better clients through the door in the first place. And you're going to need less leads, less clients through the door, which makes your life a hell of a lot easier. People sort of look like Steve Jobs in this. You do look time. like Steve Jobs in that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I think it's the, the, the age thing. Do you reckon just yeah. getting older? Yeah, yeah. That you look like you got cancer, one of the two. Maybe they just look a bit gaunt. Do I? I have Maybe. been dieting. You've been dieting, yeah. Seven kilos. Off. In total. I show off. Mm. I wish I could gain seven kilos. I might lose it. Yeah. If you lost seven kilos, you'd disappear. <laughs> We'd not be left, would that? Uh, yeah, retention. Like, I think it's one of those things where I think, um, if you think about what, what mentors will usually make content about, is they'll... Um, they'll, they'll, they'll do the sexy things. They'll do their, ooh, more clients. Um because that's what you think that you're struggling with. It's less likely that you believe that your coaching service isn't great, right? Because that's essentially what it will come down to. If you're getting clients that are regularly dropping off at two, three, four months, no matter what excuse that they're giving, something's cropped up, this, that, it's or the not other. The right fit. They weren't the right fit. The right fit. Well, doesn't the matter what excuse it is. If they're, if they're dropping off around that mark, there's something that's not set up properly either your service isn't great or you, you tying them into a minimum which i'm sure we're going to expand on in, in a second but because coaches are less likely to think that it's them that's the issue that their service needs to change that's not a great look for a mentor really when they're when they're um giving out their advice on on instagram to try to get you to buy instead they're much more likely to go down the route of here's how you need more clients and make you believe you need more clients for some people yeah that's true and of course having a net um, positive equity of clients over time is going to be useful. Even if you only grow by one per month net over the course of a year, you've, you've grown by 12 per month, right? If you're charging 200 pounds for that, that'll be nearly two and a half grand on top of monthly uh, recurring revenue, which is a great amount. And that's just a really, really conservative grow by net one. But to grow by net one, you've got to be retaining your clients. Unfortunately, some of the problems that we see is people might sign up three or four people via the strategies that you've been told, cold DMs, blah, 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 run a scholarship that doesn't exist. You might sign up three, four, five, but you're dropping three, four, five as well at the same time. So you feel like you're treading water and you're just never really getting anywhere. So we're going to run through a few things that are going to maybe help you with that. Yeah, those short-term strategies just lead to short-term clients. I think that's the, that's the the reality of the situation. Like Mike just said there, it's like, okay, if you run a scholarship and it's like, okay, I get six people in through the door who were crowbarred in with a partial. Partial. Partial scholarship. Yeah, yeah I will give you 90% off. Well, yeah, but it's, you've, over, you've over, overinflated the original price by 100%, so it doesn't really make any sense. It's, it's that whole thing of like, and then, but the reason you need to run that is because the ones that have dropped off from the last three months, when you did three months ago, have dropped off. So what's the point of just doing the same thing over and over again? Same with, uh, I'm looking for five clients. Look, those, those posts do work 
once, twice a year. If you're in a good position, you do really good content, you know your niche to a T, those, those sort of posts where you do more of a blunt post can work very, very well because it slaps them in the face. They see it and go, shit, I should probably do that. If you do that every three weeks, it doesn't have the same effect. Up, that it? was a C4, wasn't it? Cherry flavor. Taste it. Midnight almost. cherry. Taste it. Okay. It just leads to this short-term thinking and it's just that, again, it's just like a plaster over a shotgun wound. Okay, well done. It's going to do a tiny amount. Depends which part of the wound you put it on, obviously. Um, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't like work long term. It doesn't help the issue. We've had clients before, right? I, I've had clients before. I don't mind saying this that I've managed to get or help them, whatever. They managed to get between ten and fifteen calls booked each month, and I'm sat there like that, going, "Flipping out! That business is going to grow massively." And then I get to the get to the end of the month, and they go, "Oh yeah, I've only got one extra client this month." I'm like, how have you got net one client after booking that many calls in? If we'd have booked 10 to 15 calls in a month over a year of our online fitness business, we'd have gone from 10 to 100 clients. Maybe not quite 100, but you, know, you get my point. The reason that we grew really, really well was we were probably getting net five, six clients a month because we were retaining them. We still have clients now. We stopped taking on fat loss clients about 18 months ago. I still have clients now for fat loss who at that point in time, they must have joined before then, right? I've got clients with me for three years, even now still coaching them now. So when I hear coaches say that, oh, so-and-so got results, they lost, they got the, to the end of their journey after three months. No, they didn't. They didn't. Because this is an ever-evolving thing. Or they weren't the right fit. What, all of them? Well, then something you're doing wrong with your content then if they're not the right fit. So you need to go back to basics and put out the right content rather than crowbarring someone in, sending them a cold DM, getting your VA to send them a cold DM, getting them on a call and crowbarring them into a £600 upfront payment for three months because they're that desperate to lose weight. And then you're wondering why you're getting people who are desperate, what results within three months and then leave when they don't get the result. Why are you shocked by that? It doesn't shock me. Does it shock you? <laughs> Sometimes. Good acting. Um, <laughs> but it shocks see, me that coaches can't the see that that's what happens. They can't see that, 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 that they're just, it's just, a, it's just you, you reap what you sow. If you panic and you do short term things, you're going to get the people who panic and make a short term decision. That's what you're going to get. Yeah. Your business needs to be set up for um, longer term success. You, you need to have um, the strategies and the, and the actions and the, and the traits in place to allow that longer term success so the traits that i would look at are you need to be patient for one um with yeah but what can you do to get five clients in now then? yeah i need to get clients in now you need to be patient with lead acquisition and you need to be patient with your clients as well um because it's not always them but patience with your lead acquisition if you're signing up like dan said if you're if you're using strong arm tactics of um high amounts of cold dms you're trying to get book calls with anybody you're signing people up on packages expect them to be dropping off so in my mind, I would rather you not sign those type of people up. Yes, you might get a little bit of quick cash, but your business isn't going to be built on quick cash because when does that ever end? Instead, let it marinate, be patient, let it take time, allow somebody three to six months to consume your content, to have conversations with, to then join coaching because they've they've made the decision on their own. They've come to the conclusion that you're the coach for them. They're more likely to be a better fit and they're less likely to then drop off. Because over time, you should be looking at getting these clients that are staying for a year, two years, three years plus. So a client retained is easier than a client gained you don't have to go through the sales call you don't have to go through the onboarding you don't have to go through the difficult questions you don't have to provide that initial um, momentum to kind of get them going and get a result to prove your worth a longer term client becomes your friend you built a bond with them you kind of know the ins and outs of their life their coaching style is working quite well so pay attention to getting more of those clients in rather than just the quick wins everybody focuses on how can we win this week rather than how can I win at business? Stop focusing on winning the small, and um, what is it? Winning the small battles. Focus on winning the war in total. Lieutenant, sir. Go to war. Yeah. Always go to war. But like the, the thing that, that, that bothers me with clients sometimes is that they don't understand the, the, the goal of what they're trying to achieve. So for example, I had a client recently and she is going to, in six months' time, have uh, almost double the amount of clients she's got at the moment. She's got about 15 at the moment. But over the last six months, her content has developed so much. She knows her niche to a T. She's really started to find herself within her content. She's done really well. On paper, she's actually net down in clients. But 
what she's done is she's got rid of a lot of the short, the short term clients that were thinking short term, wanting results within three months, wanting to build their glutes within two months. It's just not going to happen. What she started to do recently, and this is why I know she's going to explode very, very soon, is she's starting to get messages daily now from people going, oh my God, I love your content. It really resonates with me. It hits me so well. Like, I really, I love it. Like, this is me to a T. She gets comments on her content. This is me to a T. It's like you're in my head. It's like you're in my brain. She's going to get someone reach out in six months, go, I've been following you for six months. I absolutely love what you do. And that client is going to stay for a year to two years. They're the signs that you're looking for is someone going, I followed you for, for a year. I, now's the time to reach out. That client will stay with you longer. I promise you now, but coaches aren't getting that because they're not playing the long, long game with it. They're not focused on their content, they're not focused on being themselves. They just think that everyone wants to hear about fat loss and weight loss and calories. And then they wonder why when they strung on them into something um, that they only stay for three months because again, you haven't shown them what you're like. You haven't even tried to get to know these people in any way, shape or form. So when it comes to focusing on retention, one of the biggest things that, again, we talked about it on our members call um, yesterday. If you're not a part of that, link's in the description below. Make sure you get in. Um, and it was around this concept of like getting to know your clients and understanding them as human beings. And we encourage all our coaches on Instagram, on social media to be yourselves and share your life. And I feel like what coaches do is once they get a client in using those methods, which is exactly what you should be doing, they then stop talking about themselves and stop sharing their life and stop asking those questions when actually you should probably do it more a lot of our clients probably know more about our lives than you do watching YouTube or Instagram because we speak to them more regularly about these topics. We know more about their lives. So many coaches focus on just the macros and just the calories and just the training plan and forget about the human being on the other side of it. And that is one of the biggest keys for retention and longer term, how you're going to see your clients stay longer. I think there's just a trend. Like I really dislike it, to be fair, where it's just seen as a bit of a moneymaker and that clients are a burden and look i get it like they're long days they can be draining um people can ask tough questions uh, I, I get it but it, it it is your job though like that's what they're paying you quite handsomely for if you're charging 200 225 250 275 um you were, mate. yeah 300 um you know 400 then um you're getting paid really well per per hour you're getting paid so so well it's not a lot of work so stop seeing them as an inconvenience it's not easy i'm not going to say it's easy i'm not going to say you know it's it's great receiving message after message after message and saying the same thing day in day out but that's what you signed up to unfortunately so a little piece of advice in terms of your actual coaching service um so we regularly get asked this question uh, when we talk about doing loom check-ins there's mentors out there that say why you shouldn't send a loom check-in to your clients because they don't want to watch it. They do. Um, that it's boring. Yeah, if, if, yeah. if you do it wrong, yeah. If, if, if they do it, yeah, probably. Um, and that people don't have the time. They do. Um, it's, again, coming from people who, to some degree, never really had a successful coaching business, just being upfront. So I don't know how they're best placed to provide that advice. Um but not only do we advise giving you uh, giving your clients a Loom video, we advise you receiving a Loom video um, more often than not from your client. Um, but it might take too long. Great, if it does, because you'll build that connection, you'll build that bond, you'll know more about your client, you'll be in the best place to be able to coach them. Things in that check-in are going to come up to a greater extent than a, a six-question, seven-question type form allows. You know, they're confined and restricted to answering the set questions that you've given them, whereas you give them the autonomy on a on a, on a video to, to talk and to open up and to expand. You give them a little bit of a rough guide, a little bit of a rough direction of sort of things, and let them talk. And those details that you can pick up from a video so much more um, useful in terms of coaching and being able to retain them longer term and then within your videos back you should be addressing the points that they brought up you should be building rapport you should be talking about football tv series mm -hmm. what somebody did that weekend their birthday you should do those things you're not being employed to go drop your ground uh, grams of carbs by 30 drop your grams of fat by 10 and do extra cardio that's not what you're employed for that's it. that's instructional what you need to do is you need to coach them and within that coaching you should be future pacing so what i would be doing is i would be not only talking about the week ahead which is where most coaches fall prey but talk about the months ahead and how it fits into a bigger picture and preempt the struggles that they're going to have at this point you're going to feel like this so here's what we're going to do 
So if I had a client going for a photo shoot, for example, within the last five, six weeks of the photo shoot prep, I'd be saying after you're going to feel like this, you're going to be food focused, your hunger and satiety is going to be all over the place. People are going to want to do stuff with you that you've not done for a period of time. The restriction is going to be gone to some degree because you don't have that big accountability of the shoot. So we need to be really, really careful around that and not gain weight back too quickly. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have this reverse diet strategy, which allows some flexibility on a weekend. We're then going to give you a new training program. So know that you're not happy with your chest. So whilst the extra calories are going in, we're going to be growing some muscle. And then after that, we're going to go into this phase. And then after, so people People can see, so you're not leaving them all the way to the shoot for them to go, oh, shoot's done, don't need them anymore. You're preempting the struggles in advance. That's how you retain your clients for longer within your coaching service. And coaches, I, I know for a fact, it wouldn't write out what you just said in an email. Do you know, like they give the written, I, I still to this day don't understand how any coach can coach using type form and emails. I just don't understand it. Um, I've seen it before from coaches and they share it on their Instagram, like, oh, they, they share their client checking form and it says, client, how much weight did you lose this week? Minus 1.2 and then they celebrate it. Then the next week they're posting a video on Instagram going, oh, stop focusing on weight and, and how much weight you've lost each week. And I'm like, well, you're doing that. That's exactly what you're doing is in your type form. They're the only questions you ask. Did you hit your macros? Did you do everything needed? Did you lose weight this week? I don't know how you can coach from that. I just literally don't understand because it's not coaching. It isn't coaching. It's just handing out macros and calories and changing things based on numbers. And like using a, 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 a an example, it's like a football manager doesn't just go at the end of training, oh, send me a list of all the people that scored goals in training. Wouldn't mean anything. You want to watch them, see how much they influence the game, how much they influence training. You would watch that stuff, right? You get so much more from watching that than you would at the end of it, just going, oh, give me the numbers. Because that's effectively all you're doing as a coach. I don't know any coach that can coach just by looking at numbers. It doesn't make any sense. All the best coaches, you see them in sports and anything else, they watch. They watch and they take everything in body language. How many times have you, again, using the football analogy, right? Player on the pitch, the commentator's guy's body language just doesn't look into it. How many times? It doesn't, not even, there's no conversation there. It's not written anything down by looking at people. And I cannot tell you how many times as a coach, I've watched a video update and I've said to a client, what's wrong? Because I know that because from looking at them normally, they're not their usual self. Or I can tell they're saying things like, oh, I'm fine, I'm okay, when they're clearly not fine and okay. And it's things like that that make you a coach, that allow you to retain clients. All the other stuff that Mike just said as well about like future pacing, the goals and stuff is all perfect. And I know that Mike does this really, really well alongside that as well. He didn't mention in that, but you know, if he had more time, he would have elaborated. Is you say things like, you've got this holiday as well. Oh, you know, you're going to see your mum there. You're going away with your partner for that bank holiday. So we're going to adjust calories here. We're going to do that because we understand that life is as important to them as it is to hit their fitness goals. And you're explaining to them, oh, I can help you help you achieve your goals whilst you know eating the food you love. Well, yeah, but half the time you don't show that on these type forms and all these fucking forms. Whereas we actually coach people and you actually go through that process to go, well, we're going to allow for more calories here. This is how the phases are going to build up to allow for your life, your social events. I just don't see coaches doing that with the type form check-ins. I don't see where their client can give them that information and talk through that information. You're not allowing a coaching experience because you're so obsessed with getting someone in through the door, getting the money up front, taking them through the onboarding and going, oh, it wasn't a good fit. What, you mean that they didn't do everything you want them to do on the dot every single day? What are you expecting? Because then if no one's going to be a good fit, because you're asking for a robot to come in, you're not working with robots. Coaches are so lazy. They're not prepared to actually help people beyond going, here's your macros and calories for this week. That's like us saying to you, go post on Instagram seven times this week. Yeah, but what you're posting is shit. Doesn't matter. Just post seven times. It's not going to work, is it? Just post 10 stories each day. Well, what type of stories? Because if you just reshare your reels, that's pointless. If you actually show behind the scenes, that might be useful. So numbers don't mean anything. And coaches need to get their head around the fact that so many of them preach online about don't focus on numbers, but yet you're conditioning your clients to focus on numbers all the time. And you're giving them no help and support as a human. Bit runny. Coaching is a compromise at the end of the day. Like whether you choose to believe that or not, some of the issues that most coaches feel uh, or face, sorry, will be um, when clients are non-adherent. And I don't always think it's due to the client. I think um, sometimes it could be. I think sometimes people just aren't in a good spot and um, things happen, so on and so forth. But most people wouldn't be paying you their money if they didn't have some element of uh, wanting to, to, to change some things. Like I say, not always, but in a lot of cases. And I genuinely think it's because coaches lack the empathy of what real life is. You need to compromise within, within your coaching. You need to get the most out of them on a week-to-week -week basis. Not what you want them to do, to be perfect, but what they can do. That's what you need to do. And I don't think that you can get that and convey that and translate it in a type form. I just don't think you can do it. If, if you see a client and they've lost 0.2 or whatever for the week and you go, yeah, crack on, A, 
you've not looked at any kind of trend. B, you don't know what's going on in their week. You don't know what's coming up for the week ahead. You actually don't know. And again, it, when you, you, you're happy to put out content that says don't focus on the scale weight, yet you're making all of your coaching decisions based on that scale weight. It's incorrect. Instead, it's the compromise of, right, okay, maybe it's not what's best on paper, but what can we do this week to get this person navigate through these issues that they are currently facing and are about to face? That's what it is. What's the lowest hanging fruit? What can we get out of them? That way you'll retain clients rather than trying to get them to hit this ideal thing that doesn't exist that's just too far of a stretch from where they are now. I don't have time for the program. I'm just not able to do it right now. I just don't think I can commit to things right now. These are all keys and indicators that you're pitching your coaching to yeah. in, in too much of a different direction mm -hmm. to what they were, what were wanting or expecting. Yeah. Rectify that. That's that's one of the biggest things that, uh, that that's not that's not good feedback to be getting because that shows that you're what you're doing is too rigid and not flexible enough yeah. um, within that. And you you preach that all the time. You preach about all this sort of stuff. And I, I, like I said, I just don't see how you can get it across in, in a text or in, in any sort of formal written check-in. I just don't see how you can get it across. And like we're talking there about video as well, like it, those, those video check-ins are so, so vital to picking up these little cues and little things like that. Because how many times do you probably say to a client, no, no changes this week, everything's looking good. If I got that three weeks in a row from just an email, I would be like, well, what the hell am I paying for then? Yeah. But if you do it on video, we're not saying that your advice needs to change. You probably don't need to make any changes. But what you need to be talking about is, right, this week we don't need to make any changes because we're on course for the end of this eight weeks to be having this much weight loss, which was our original goal. Once we get to that week eight, I think things are going to slow down. That's when we're going to need to make changes. So between now and then, we're going to hit the grip. We're going to keep going. We're going to make sure we push the training side of stuff. And then when things need to change there, this is how I propose we change things. How does that fit with your lifestyle? How does that fit with things? At this point, we'll also change your training plan. We'll focus more on chest, more on shoulders, because I think that's going to be the best time to do it because you're going Going to be a little bit more time constraint because of x y and z with your job and the kids childcare. so what i want to do is make sure that those training sessions are focused on chess so that's gonna be week eight we're at week three now there's no reason to change anything for the next two three weeks it looks like everything's all good if we stay as we are but we're then going to go week eight that's where we're going to change things and then look at that next period of time to build then your glutes and your hamstrings around this week 16 mark so we're gonna have an eight week focus on your chest this is just what i'm proposing but i think this is going to fit best where at the moment obviously all subject to change but that's where i think we're at now, that sounds more exciting, doesn't it? If you want to build your physique and you want to grow and you want to just, no changes this week, everything's good. Or green light on the fucking um, type form check-in. Yeah, well, no wonder people leave after three months because they don't need you because you're providing nothing beyond a calorie calculator. This is the thing. Like, coaches, bad coaches, are going to be replaced very, very quickly because people are cottoning on. Our coach, Jake, recently had a bit of feedback from someone. Um, that onboarding video I had was, was a million times better than anything I've ever had from any other coach. Don't be that other coach. Don't, you need to be the coach now because people are realizing what they're paying for and what they're worth and what they're getting are a million miles apart because other coaches now are starting to realize they have to up their game because people like Jake, people like the coaches that we coach are upping their game every single week and month to retain their clients for longer. Simple as that. That's it, isn't it? That's it. Go on. Subscribe and that. Make sure you do that. For Subscribe. Us. If you want to learn more of this sort of stuff in more depth, it's actually going to help you. Click the link and join the members group. Do it now. Do it. Steve Jobs said so.